Hi, today I'm going to talk about my newly built device. It's automated uh, motorized focus stacking rail. And this is something I've done over the over this summer and so it took a while but uh, most of the time I actually spent just waiting for parts to be delivered from China, from cheap places from eBay. So let me show what it is about. So as you can see, by the way most of this stuff is not my work so don't be scared. There is actually just one single module you can see here and let me turn it around. So as a basis I used uh, Velbon Max Slider manual rail which you can see you can see here and the thing which I attached was the motor unit which is this rectangular thing here with two wires attached to it and uh, also you can see so it has an enclosure but the back is not covered you can see the stepper motor which directly drives the focusing knob of the Velben macro oil. There are two connectors as you can see here one is uh, it's actually a very convenient connector from Yongnuo a range of remote camera triggers and you can buy this cable for many different camera models it's probably around three dollar worth and on one end it has 2.5 millimeter stereo phone connector and that connector goes inside my motor unit the other end it's convenient to go circuit this way around the camera and in this case it's Canon 50D DSLR and it goes inside the camera so this is to trigger the shutter of the camera you can also see there are there is another cable just one cable which goes to the controller unit and I decided to use readily available 8 wire cable which is called CAT5 or SCAT6 which is Ethernet normally cable I'm using for totally different purposes so it's absolutely a big no you cannot attach my motor unit to any true Ethernet device you will burn both devices probably so I'm using for multiple reasons it has eight wires so I'm using four wires to deliver signals to the motor to the stepper motor I have two wires to, which goes to trigger the shot of the camera and as I will show later the rail has two micro switches limited micro switches so two wires send signal back to the controller if my rail is about to hit one of the two physical limits so that's uh, that's about it so this is the motor unit but there is also two more units uh, second unit I'm gonna show you is the controller unit so this is the brain of the device I made it's um, it's fairly small enclosure and as you can see it has keypad it has LCD display which is a cheap Nokia 5110 LCD display so inside I, in another video I'm going to show what's going on inside it has Arduino Uno R3 microcontroller which one has to program and which I has I have written a program to operate this device it has stepper motor driver is a driver it's a very tiny board it has a small breadboard at the top which uh, keeps some other components loose components and as you can see as I mentioned already key keypad 4x4 keypad large and convenient to use and LCD screen with six lines as you will see later again it's attached just with a single 8 wire Ethernet regular patch cable and the way designed it can be either straight or crossover it's still gonna work it's still safe but you have to be absolutely sure when you assemble it yourself that you're not gonna burn your camera by sending motor voltage into camera by using some wrong type of cable so the way I designed it shouldn't matter 
Uh, also, there are two other connectors. One is the power. It can be powered by 10 to 12 volt AC adapter, but in my case, I really want it to be portable, hopefully to be usable outdoors with live insects. So I'm using, it's a very cheap thing, like three doors probably. It's enclosure with eight AA batteries. I'm using rechargeable analog style batteries, which has a power connector, which is exact match to the Arduino board. Great thing. And it has a switch, so I don't have to come up with a ways to make a switch for my Arduino. So all I have to do is to connect, connect my, so these are the three models together. So this is the third model. Uh, in the future, I'll probably use some kind of Velcro, sticky attachments, so they are kept together. So I can use it either with batteries or without, with an AC power dot. So that's how it looks like together. And I think I'll try to do the first demonstration now. Uh, just a couple of notes. So this is the motor unit, but there are a few useful parts you need to do to use for micro stacking. So one of them is this part. It's a just regular manual rail. It's probably 12 doors shipped from China, uh, which can be used on its own. In this case, it's only used to provide proper balancing for the camera. And also because I'm using fairly short macro lens, this is one of those enlarger lens inverted sitting on top of extension tubes. It has good quality and it provides magnification five to one. So we're talking about super macro, not just regular macro, but it's super macro, extremely thin depth of field, around 50 microns. So you need, you need to stack maybe 100 or 200 shots to make nice photo, let's say of a, of a fly or of a bee which is totally unrealistic without motorized macro, macro rail. That's why all this fuss about. So, and this additional piece, this uh, just uh, flat rail is just being used to provide good support. And now I can focus around this distance, which so it works properly now. Without this piece, you wouldn't be able to focus properly with this uh, just Velben Max slide. It wouldn't be sufficient. You need extra piece. Uh, also, when you do focus stacking, you probably want to consider uh, other things. You need light. So the whole idea of this macro rail is that camera is moving continuously at a given speed, determined by a few parameters, like frame per second and micromillimeters per frame. And the fact that you still can make sharp photos is due to the fact that you, you're you using a flash. So for example, flash, something like this, Yonggu 560 with built-in radio controller. It's very convenient to use a uh, radio controller, which is RF603C2, to control. You can control a bunch of these flashes, but for macro, you just normally need just one. And again, a cheap softbox from eBay. Uh, just to make it softer, which is this thing is sufficient for macro application, not really good for anything else. And because it's uh, radio control, it's better operated, so it's fully detached. So the way I would operate it, I would point to a target, place my flash very close by, and hold it. And my camera with this Arduino contro controller can do up to four frames per second. So this flash can also do four frames per second if used at 116 power. And by the way, the smaller the power of the flash, the shorter is the flash impulse, which means it freezes the motion even better. So camera keeps moving, flash keeps flashing, and because flash is so, so short, it's maybe 100 microsecond, uh, that the motion blur is totally gone. So all the photos in my stacking, uh, in my stack, they're absolutely sharp, as I will demonstrate later. So, uh, but if you want to go beyond 15 frames, uh, this flash will not operate well with just batteries. And you need one more thing. Uh, I think it's around 20, 25 dollars from eBay. It's a cheap knockoff for Canon style external battery for your, for your flash. And this Yonggu 560 has a connector, standard connector for this external battery. 
so you can attach it like here you can turn it on and you can see green light working this external it has eight AA batteries so in addition of four batteries it has inside it has additional eight AA batteries and in my test it can do just fine 30 pictures in a row at one eighth power with four frames per second which is more than you can possibly hope to achieve with live insects outdoors uh, this uh, controller the motorized macro can also be used in studio in fact it has two modes of operation one of this called live modes I call it one point shooting and the other mode is more like studio which is two point shooting so let me show how it actually works I'm going to power it up and the whole design is a sort of professional type of device in mind uh, so when you turn it on it's instantly available for using so you just turn it on you press a specific button and it will start shooting right away with the parameters you used last time so let me see how it's gonna show on the screen uh, by the way there is backlighting and I programmed just three different levels uh, so there are a few key combination you can use and there is pound 4 which cycles through no backlighting small and bright so let's try no backlighting for this uh, experiment and so let me demonstrate there are keys you can use to do simple things so there are there are around 23 functions programmed into this device and the display is very rich it shows everything basically you need to know about anything you plan to do so there is no menus to travel through no touch screens to mess around with it's all programmed to be instantly and directly usable so you turn it on and instantly you can press a button and so you press this button it will start doing focus stacking in a forward direction which means in that direction and with the parameters you can read it here so it will make 12 shots with uh, it will travel 11 millimeters it will take three seconds so the distance between shots is one millimeter 1000 microns and I will be using the maximum possible FPS frame per second which is four and uh, yeah that about it so I press that button you point to the in this case to the background of your subject you press the start button and it start moving to the foreground it will travel 11 millimeters making 12 frames with four frames per second I press D button and that will do one point focus second in the opposite direction that is I find it more natural so you first uh, use two rewind buttons here one or a back and forth to find a good starting point which is usually foreground and then normally I press D and it start doing focus stacking in the towards the background of your object so let's just do that I turn it on and almost instantly I can press the D button but first let me turn on the camera it's been off for now so I'm gonna turn it on and I guess I'll also show how the flash works and this is radio controller it's on and then I'm gonna turn on my flash it's set at 116 so I think it should work um, let's see how it's gonna show on the screen I'm pressing D button and off you go okay so it worked fine so in, it moved in that direction you can do it the opposite direction okay so in the, but the initial process usually you have to fine-tune your initial point so you use rewind and actually you hit this this area there is a limiting area it won't go there is a limiting switch but you normally never hit the switch if it's properly calibrated the first thing you do when you turn this device on for the first time it does automatic calibration so let me show you how it works I press you can always in, do that later by pressing number sign C it tells you a warning you're about to start calibration and that's done on purpose so if you are 
lens is almost touching something, you don't want it to be moving all of a sudden at very, fairly fast speed. So the maximum speed program to move, this thing is 5 mm per second. I found it's good enough to move fairly fast from back to back and forth. The whole space ranges are about 60 mm, that's the Velbon Max slider can do. So it takes like 15 seconds to rewind from one end to the other and, and it provides good torque and good accuracy. So it was a good compromise. So press any button, now the calibration will start. It will test both limiting switches, it will trigger them and it will record their position so in the future it will never even trigger them in the course of normal operation. So, so I'm starting calibration. It's gonna hit one switch. Click. Okay, it hit. Now it moves backwards. It will hit the second switch and then it will move a little bit back into the safe area. Okay, so now it's properly calibrated. So calibration will be lost under certain conditions. For example, if your battery gets very low voltage, but in fact you can program this controller once it goes beyond certain critical voltage it will just stop working so you'll never lose calibration because of that. Also if you open the enclosure and will try to manually spin the focusing knob that will uh, first of all that can damage your uh, motor driver because of the induced voltage so don't do that. One of the purpose I have this enclosure it's not just for aesthetics not just to keep some elements attached but to prevent them potentially making damage to your motor driver. It costs $1.40 shipping from China, but it's a hassle to replace it, to resolder all these connectors. So it's a good idea not to do that. Plus, when you rotate it by hand, the, uh, the rail loses calibration. There is no feedback loop. Motor driver has no idea if you move it by hand or not. It only knows how it moves the rail itself. So that was, so you can rewind now and it will never hit the switch. It's program you can try, it will never ever hit the switch because it was calibrated. You can move. So it moves as long as you press the button. Uh, I program with a fixed acceleration rate, so it's not instantaneous. This is good, it's uh, to uh, basically make less load on the mostly plastic bearings, bearings inside the uh, bell bone max slider and also it goes easier on the stepper motor so there is constant, constant acceleration and deceleration and it also helps you to really finely position so you see the opposite limit also cannot go further so it has so so far demonstrated only three features so you can probably already see there are six lines on the display the first two lines shows three important parameters for two important modes of operation. There are only two modes of operation for this device. One I just demonstrated was single point shooting. You basically rewind to where you want to start, either foreground or background, and then press one of these two buttons to move in the opposite direction and start focus stacking. Uh, the second mode of operation is called two point uh, stacking and it's normally used in studio environment. That's when you want to fine tune both foreground and background. And for that, it's all quite straightforward. So, first you operate the foreground. So, you move back and forth until you're satisfied. This is your foreground point. Then you press one button down, four, and you actually memorize. So you, may, you might be able to see it actually memorize the foreground point. Now you rewind it backwards and you found your background point so it's actually a proper the letter B so you memorize the background point you press B again reflected now you can actually see there are both coordinates in millimeters both foreground and background point and it also tells me that the distance between the two points is 8.2 millimeters and with the current parameters which is uh, microns per frame in this case it's 1000 micron per frame by the way, it's very large. Normally, I don't do that. I do much smaller uh, distance between frame, and that uh, parameter is totally de determined by the depth of field of your macro lens, which is mostly dependent on the magnification and f number. So magnification is five to one, f number is four, 
So this lens is actually sharper at the wide open, uh, f number is 4. So the depth of field is 50 microns. So let me actually show how we change that. So I use these two buttons to set background, foreground, point. So there are six buttons in the middle. The left ones decrease a parameter, the right one increase. You basically step through a table with 25 values. If you just click, 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 only one parameter at a time, one value at a time, you uh, progress to the table. But if you press and hold, then you cycle, skip through multiple parameters very quickly. So that's a convenient way to go through the whole table very quickly. So, and parameter number three, these two buttons here, it's the frame per second. So four, we're gonna keep it at four. Uh, but in studio I usually do something slower. Let's do it more realistic. Uh, okay, let's keep it four. And next parameter it here, five and six buttons, changes frame, millimeter per frame, or rather micron per frame. Right now it's 1000. There is a line here, you probably cannot see it well. 1000 micron per frame. I'm gonna make it more like 50 micron per frame. This is what the actual depth of field for this macro lens is. So I need 20 shots to cover the depth of field of one millimeter. To cover a, f a fly, for example, sort of sideways, I need something like 150 shots because I need to cover, uh, let's say, a few millimeters. And uh, so, okay, so I said 50 micron per frame. And, uh, but because of, I made a very large distance between two points is actually 8.2 millimeters. So I want to actually modify my, uh, right now we're at background. I want to forward a little bit. I don't want to make too many shots for this demonstration. So, so I'm going to modify my foreground to be so it's only sorry the background so it's only no it's actually not enough oh, i think i inverse the order anyway so this is foreground this is background so i'm gonna have two millimeters this is more realistic and it will make 42 shots four frames per second with 50 micron per frame. But of course, uh, I won't let it do because even with external battery, my flash will not survive. Uh, probably will not survive. I mean, it might actually, 42 shots. Anyway, so once you start focus stacking in any mode, either single point or two point, you can press any button any time during this stacking to stop it instantly. So if something goes wrong, you just press any button, it stops instantly. So in this case, uh, and it's convenient, you can be anywhere, you can rewind, you can somewhere else. But as long as this foreground, background points are there, they are stored, pressing a single button, zero, will move the camera to the nearest of the two points. And then it will start focus stacking with the given parameters towards the other point. So at first it will rewind and then it will start stacking. So let me see if my flash is no. My flash went off. I turn it on. So now we'll be doing studio style shooting with pressing this button. We already set up foreground, background points. In total should be 42 shots, traveling two millimeters, four frames per second, 50 microns between frame. But I will interrupt it. I don't wanna uh, press too hard on my shot with four frames per second is pretty tough. So for studio I usually use 0.5 frame per second which means one shot every two seconds. Then I know my flash can last at least 150 shots, maybe more at 116 power. Okay, pressing zero button. I'm gonna interrupt. Okay. So, but, it, and so on. If you set much slower, like 0 0.5 frame per second, then you can easily go 150 shots or more with a flash plus the external battery pack. So I showed you how to change parameters, how to rewind, how to do single point, two point uh, focus stacking. Okay, what I haven't shown you, a few auxiliary c commands. 
uh, well, star 4 I showed you before you can operate with the backlighting. There are a few other, not star, sorry, it was number. So it's sort of control uh, key, so you can say number or something else. So you can take a shot. It's just like use it as a remote uh, trigger, shadow trigger. Number, uh, okay, so it's number 7. It just took a shot. It just it's convenient so you don't have to touch camera when you do super macro you normally want to avoid touching cameras at all by if, if at all possible another convenient recent feature added number sign one will move your camera one frame backward whatever number of uh, microns you set it up 50 for example if you click multiple times it will do multiple frame movements so if I do like this it's almost imperceptible because it's 50 microns and then number sign A corresponding moves in the opposite direction all these coordinates are displayed here this is convenient for example you were doing very lengthy focus stacking in the studio 200 shots and halfway through your flash battery died or it just flash got overheated and it turned itself off so have you wasted 100 shots with your camera? no because now we can check on your camera how many shots are black let's say three last shots were black because can, uh, flash died then you backtrack whatever is appropriate of these uh, keys one or eight a few shots back so you're back to the frame which was still okay and then you you know change batteries for your flash and then you use single point shooting in the same direction where you want to go you choose so the top parameter I haven't shown yet you can change with the keys two and three in a single point shooting you set how many shots you want to take either in this direction by pressing star or in that direction by pressing D right now it's 100 so if you got stuck halfway through you still need to do 100 more then it's approximately 100 and then you can do one point shooting in the appropriate direction so you can uh, sort of save your work without wasting time and wasting shorter life you know it's not unlimited the camera you just made 100 and then you can make so this uh, number sign A or 1 single frame movements uh, it's a very convenient recent feature I added exactly for situation uh, practical situation when something goes wrong and you still want to continue and finish your work so those were uh, two extra key uh, functions I just explained sometimes very rarely these days program might still have bugs something goes wrong and camera just keeps moving so there is a special button to break it may have emergency braking number sign b for braking so you do that and it will stop whatever movement it was doing it will stop uh, number sign c as i explained does the calibration of the rail if something goes wrong by the way if calibration is lost gradually and in the course of normal operation the camera just hits accidentally one of the limiting switches then the calibration will be triggered automatically you don't have to press press number C it will actually memorize the switch it just hit and then it will rewind all the way to the other switch memorize the other switch and it's gone it's done sorry so which means uh, calibration sort of self initiated in this case or you can always request it manually uh, there is also control sorry which control which is number sign star sign this is a factory reset so if you want to return your module to exactly the same condition you had initially you do that that first will reinitialize all the parameters by the way all the parameters here the three important parameters number of shots for single point shooting uh, number of uh, microns between frames micron per frame a number of frames per second these are three important parameters plus whatever the two points you memorize foreground background they are always kept in the permanent memory of Arduino so when you turn it off and then on it's still going to remember those and by the way I didn't mention there are actually six more functions involving number sign uh, at any point you can save the most frequent combination of those parameters five parameters by using number sign two five or eight this will save all this parameter register one register two or register three again it goes to the permanent memory uh, you can turn it off turn it on at any point for example now register one is frequent parameters used for single point shooting 
So you turn it on and then you do number sign 3. So you're just recalling, taking from memory the parameters and then you can use them right away. Same with uh, register 2 and register 3 by using number sign 3, 8, sorry, 3, 6 and 9. So 6 buttons, keys here, together with the number sign are dedicated to saving and reading uh, all the important parameters from three register for most frequently used combination of parameters. Uh, yep, so that's about it. I showed you how this thing operates. I might show you how it works on a real subject, which is a dead flight. All right, this is my simple setup to do studio work. So you can see dead fly and my lens is more or less focused on the fly so it, you can see it's fairly close uh, distance around maybe four centimeters this whole super macro lenses do what they do and you can see there is a reflector I'll be using to get nice reflected light because you normally want to use just one flash you don't want to use issues with flashes being slightly asynchronous when your camera keeps moving all right, normally I don't use live view my camera when I do macro stacking, focus stacking because it really slows down operation. But right now I connected this monitor to the, my camera and turn it live view on so you can actually see my Raven operation. So uh, I'm going to rewind. So the camera is pointed to a fly and I can, what I can do, I can you can rewind, go back and forth. You see, there is a bit of shaking, is because my uh, tripod is not perfectly stable, but uh, it should interfere with your work. So what you do, you basically set up the foreground point in this point somewhere around here, maybe. You set up the foreground point, then you go backwards somewhere the background is maybe the end where the the rear paw is there you set up the background point so with 50 micron per frame it would mean 140 shots uh, okay, of course 4 frames per second is unrealistic I would have to switch it to something like uh, 0 0.5 frame per second um, and by the way, I, I didn't explain the uh, key 7, when you press it, it rewinds to the foreground point and key C rewinds to the background point. So you can go back and forth, back and forth, you can fine tune those points, reset them. So I'm going now to uh, foreground points. I press 7 and it brought me all the way to the foreground. I press C and it's going to go to the background point and so forth. Regardless where you locate it, uh, I set up 0 0.5 frame per second, 50 micron between frames. It's going to be 140 shots. Let's see how it's going to work with the live view. I actually haven't tried it. I press zero button. There is no flash, so it's not going to be really nice pictures. It's going to be top, perfectly black pictures, in fact, but just, I want you to see what's going on. All right, so I actually cannot see it on the screen. But anyway, so you can hear the process started. And in fact, if I enable my flash now, it would start flashing and would make actual pictures. So anytime I press any button, I can interrupt the process. And I think, yeah, we are back to the live view. As I explained, normally don't use live view when you do macro photography, things slow down. You cannot achieve four frames per second, for example. But it's a nice way to demonstrate that uh, how this ray operates. So the whole distance between foreground and background, you can read from the screen, is 6.9 millimeters. Covered with 140 shots, extremely sharp, with depth of field only 50 microns. And if you use reasonably good focus stacking software, you get crystal clear and sharp fly all the way, all those 7 millimeters.